Hi, this is Billy Tarasio from Modern Law, and today I want to talk about a topic that's super, super important, but maybe not all that fun to talk about, and that's domestic violence. And, um, and how confusing the concept of domestic violence can be with regards to family law. So in family law, there's a couple of different places that domestic violence comes up most frequently. And that is, well, really, we, you've got three different things going on. You can have a criminal charge for domestic violence, and that can have its own ramifications. You can have a civil order of protection or order against harassment for domestic violence, or you can have a finding in the family court with regards to a custody or divorce case with, um, in regards to domestic violence. And they all have different burdens of proof and different things that you have to show. And so when you're describing or you're trying to allege domestic violence in the uh, petition for an order of protection, that's gonna look very different than how you might write it if you're going in front of a family law judge. And so let's just break these things down. In order to get an order of protection, you have to meet certain criteria. The relationship between you or between the two individuals, the person who gets the order of protection and the person upon whom the order of protection is placed, you have to have a certain relationship. You have to have, you have to be married, formerly married, live together, um, have a child together, uh, you have, the, pre the person is either pregnant with the, um, the two people are having a baby together. The alleged victim is somehow um, related by blood. And so sometimes you'll see parents obtain an order of protection on behalf of their child against the other child, against the other parent, or um, living in the same residence as the child victim. So you could get an order of protection against, let's say your ex-wife's um, new boyfriend. You could get an order of protection against that person on behalf of your child. Um, or if there is an allegation that the defendant and the victim are ro uh, involved romantically or sexually. So, you know, two minors could have um, an order of protection uh, in place prohibiting contact between them. And the burden of proof for an order of protection is different than that of criminal law. So in, in criminal law, in order to be convicted of domestic violence, the state has to be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that an act of domestic violence occurred. And that is not the case in an order of protection hearing. You don't have to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, beyond a reasonable doubt, that um, domestic violence occurred. You have to show beyond a, by a preponderance of the evidence, which means it's more likely than not that it happened. And um, there are certain things that qualify as domestic violence, and those are according to the criminal code. So the criminal code has um, and that's ARS 13-3601. And it defines what a domestic violence, um, what constitutes domestic violence. So it's between those people that we talked about, and it includes the sexual assault of a minor, negligent homicide, manslaughter, second degree murder, first degree murder, endangerment, threatening or intimidation, assault, aggravated assault, custodial interference, unlawful imprisonment, kidnapping, sexual assault, unlawful distribution of images, criminal trespass in the third, first, or second degree, which is something that comes up quite a bit, criminal trespass, criminal damage. So if somebody comes into your home and they destroy your stuff, that could be an act of domestic violence that, that, um, that would allow you to go get an order of protection. And the nice thing about the order of protection is you don't have to wait for the police to arrest someone and the DA to decide to press charges. You can go get an order um, on your own behalf to protect yourself or prohibit contact. And that's what this order of protection does, is it prohibits the um, person, the, we'll call them the, the defendant. It prohibits the defendant from coming near you or your property or your kid's school. Other um, things that are on this list of categories that can be um, domestic violence, interfering with judicial proceedings, harassment, aggravated harassment, stalking, misconduct involving weapons at an airport, aggravated domestic violence, child or vulnerable adult abuse, cruel negligent abandonment of an animal with serious injury or cruel mistreatment of an animal, and um, interfering with someone's use or ability to use a telephone in an emergency. So those are all of the things that you must allege. So if you are filling out a petition for an order of protection, I recommend you cite the statute that you are 
um, relying upon. So if you're, so, okay, you have facts, you have things that happened. Let's say, you know, you got into a fight and um, your ex took your phone and would not let you leave and was yelling and was in your face. So you can say those things, but if you forget to say, you know, he took your phone, because those aren't always things that come to mind. So you can say, you know, I was scared. A lot of people talk about this. I was scared or I felt blah, 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 or I thought he was going to blah, blah, blah. And that is not the way to do it. Instead, you want to say under section, um, oh, I might have left this out, electronic communication to terrify, intimidate, threaten, or harass. So you might say under section uh, 13-2916, my ex-boyfriend sent text messages, you know, that were um, intimidating, threatening, and harassing when he said, and then you use the specifics. So tell the judge before you even get in front of the judge, tell the hearing officer, this is how I qualify and this is how I, I meet the requirements legally. You want to make it as easy as possible to get an order of protection if you're trying to get an order of protection. Now, if you're fighting against this order of protection, then you're going to want to look at the words on the paper and then the statutes. Go to the corresponding statutes of the criminal, what constitutes criminal behavior, and ask yourself, do the words on this petition constitute the crime or any crime of domestic violence? Because if it doesn't, if your behavior was bad, and sometimes we've had this where people are fighting via text or they're fighting on the phone and they're not being nice to one another and they're calling each other names, but is that domestic violence? It depends. And so really look at what the um, actual language of the law says as what constitutes a violation. And then if you are going in, what happens with a, an order of protection is you can obtain an order of protection, it then gets served. When it's served, and you can get an order of protection at any courthouse in the state of Arizona. And so you can go into any courthouse and they'll have forms for you and you can fill them out. But if you don't fill them out properly, you might not get your order of protection or it might not hold up. So when, if you get an order of protection, it is served and it's served for free by the sheriff on the other party. And then the other party can request a hearing to contest that hearing. And then your burden, if you're the petitioner, it's your burden to prove that these things happened. So make sure that you've alleged it correctly, meaning you've stated exactly what happened and you've stated what happened in regards to the crime that was committed and then have evidence to support what you're saying. Um, now, if you decide that you are, that you've got a family law case and you need to decide, you know, do I contest the hearing? Do I move forward on a contested hearing for the order of protection or am I better off having this heard with a family court judge? That is a decision that has to be made and it's a strategic decision. It's not always clear, it's not always easy. So talk to a lawyer. It's something that we have spent a lot of time really thinking about. We look at who's the hearing officer, what are the facts of the case, and which judge is in a better protection to hear this. Because in family court, you do not have to prove beyond a preponderance of an evidence that domestic violence occurred. In family court, we are proving what's in the best interest of the children. And one of those factors is domestic violence. But even if we can't prove domestic violence occurred, if we can prove that the child is scared of the parent or the child you know, is having emotional or psychological issues with regards to the relationship with the parent and there's an allegation of abuse, that is often enough for a family court judge to say, even if we don't know 100% of domestic violence has occurred, there's enough here to make us think that you know, equal parents to time is a bad idea and we need to get therapeutic intervention or some investigation going. So the bar of proof is lower in family court than it is in um, the civil order protection standard. And that's even lower than it is in the criminal context. These are not easy decisions and they're not easy things to analyze. So if you've got questions or you'd like assistance, um, give us a call. We can walk through this with you. We can have a strategy session. We can talk through the facts of your case, the different laws that might apply to you and see what we can't figure it out. I hope that this has been helpful for you if you are planning to file for an order of protection or if you're figuring out how to allege and how to prove domestic violence in a divorce case. Thank you and make sure to subscribe.